Hi everyone, welcome back to our Great Trunk RFID YouTube channel. Today we're going to jump into part three of our three part series, launching a mobile RFID asset tracking system. In the first part of our series we went over how to choose the best RFID tag. In the second part of our series we went over the Bluetooth RFID handheld readers. And then today in our third part of our series we're going to jump into the RFID asset tracking software. Stay tuned, this is by far the most exciting part of the entire series as we are actually going to be scanning RFID tags and show you how the entire solution comes together with the software. Alright, we're now going to jump into the Great Trunk RFID asset tracking software. The software is the piece that sort of pulls everything together in your asset tracking solution. So as we discussed, we have the RFID tags that we apply to our assets. We have our Bluetooth RFID handheld readers that we connect to our mobile device. And then now we have the software. So as you can see, one of the first things that you're gonna wanna do is go to greattrunkrfid.com, create your free trial, or if you already do have an account, uh, you can simply log in uh, here. Once you do that, you access the Great Trunk system. Um, if it's your first time logging in, this dashboard will be blank. Uh, but we're going to jump into some of the main features of the, of the software. And then later on down the road, I'll show you the mobile app as well and sort of how to perform the RFID um, scanning. But the web app is where you're going to do a lot of the setup and running the reports. So I'll show you here. Uh, first, the dashboard overview, it's going to tell you the number of assets that you have in the system, how many you added in the last 12 months, the net asset value of the assets that you currently have, the number of employees in your system, and the number of sub-users. Uh, I'll touch base on the number of employees and sub-users uh, and the difference between those in just a little bit. We then have four asset statuses, disposed, lost, available, and checked out. And then we give a brief overview of the asset by category. So this is how you would group your assets together. The calendar here will show you assets that are past due if you currently have them checked out of the home location. And then it also shows the maintenance uh, due if you've scheduled maintenance on any of your assets. And then finally on the dashboard, we have the recent activity, which gives you the timestamp of the day and the time what asset has changed. So this recent activity just gives you the uh, change of statuses. So of those four statuses that we discussed a little bit earlier, um, it just gives you the, the what sub user changed the status from available to checked out or checked out to available, you know, lost to disposed, whatever it may be between those statuses. Uh, this is gonna highlight that here. Uh, one of the most critical parts of the entire system is the setup and that's you do that on the web app here so I'm going to briefly touch base on some of the framework of how to set up an account. Uh, it sort of makes sense later on down the road when you're going to be doing an RFID inventory scan. So first you're going to set up your sites. So your sites are your over uh, is a larger area so it could be a building, it could be a campus, uh, it could be a headquarters um, for instance. Um, whereas your location is going to be the child to that site. So it's a more specific area within that site. So it could be a specific room. Uh, it could be an entire building on a campus. Uh, it could be an individual's office um, for, as an example. Or it could be a specific truck if you're working in construction industry. Uh, that, that truck could actually be considered a location. Next, your categories, again, is how you group your assets together. This is all customizable. We do offer some default fields if you want to use for just common categories that are used throughout um, a lot of fixed asset tracking applications. But again, if you want to add any specific category, you can do that here. Um, and then you can delete the ones that you don't want to, to have. Um, so you can clean it up a little bit. So categories, again, are extremely important when you group your assets together as far as reporting on later, later down the road. If you want to pull reports on a specific group of, or category of assets, it's very easy to do that way then. And then your asset fields is how you are describing your assets. So here in the Great Trunk system, we have some predefined fields um, that will automatically be included in the setup, but then we also have some default fields that you can include if you want to. 
One of the um, big things about Gray Trunk system is the ability to add custom fields. So for an example, if I wanted to add maybe um, to have the operating system of specific MacBooks or laptop computers by Apple, I can have a field name called iOS, um, so the operating system. Um, I could have that required and searchable, and then I could limit that to just laptops or computer equipment if I want to. So this field will only come up for the category of laptops and computer equipment, and then you're able to add that there. Uh, another thing is the ability to select different field types. So you can have numeric fields, single line text, uh, drop down, date picker, uh, the radio button, or the checkbox. So there's a wide range of customization available for your asset fields. Again, asset fields is how you want to describe your assets. So you can be as detailed as you want or you can just have a, a very limited number. Um, really depends on your organization. Jumping into the difference between employees and, and sub-users, employees are more or less placeholders for assets. So employees do not have access to the uh, database. This is where you would actually be able to check out assets to specific individuals. So it's a placeholder. So if I check out an asset to um, Buddy Johnson, I'll know that Buddy Johnson is responsible for that asset and then I can even see when that asset is supposed to be due back. Whereas your sub-users are users that are able to access the Gray Trunk system. So you can have as many as you want here. Um, Gray Trunk offers unlimited sub-users. So here you can add the sub-user, they'll be able to choose their own um, password. So they'll just be nested under the super admin. But if I wanted to go to this sub-user here, you can set individual permissions um, based on that, that sub-user. So if you want them to have all permissions or if you want them to be an admin of the account, you can certainly do that. Uh, you know, or you can have them just view the, view the asset in the entire database, but not have the ability to edit or add or delete assets. So there's a lot of different permissions that you can perform for each individual sub-user. And then jumping into the number of assets, um, this is your asset database. Um, and we'll just jump into the asset details and show you what this looks like. So if I want to see an individual asset, I have the ability to do multiple different things here on the web app. Um, first, you can have a picture added of that asset so you know what it is. You can have all the asset information available here based on the number of custom fields that you included. Um, you can see the status and as you can see here, this asset is actually checked out to um, Buddy Johnson. And then one of the uh, big things that we wanna touch base on are these five tabs right here. So the document tab is the ability to add a PDF or Excel file or Word document to the asset. Um, where you can, maybe maybe it could be like a, a PO or it could be a material safety data sheet, um, it could be an operating procedure, something that might be very critical to that specific asset, you can have that added to the system underneath that specific asset. So then if you need to pull that information up in the field, you'll have it available on your mobile device, which is very useful. The history gives you the, um, anything that has happened to that asset, We Dates, date stamp it, time stamp it. We have the sub user that you know, uh, changed the status or updated or scheduled the maintenance. Whatever action was performed on that, that asset, we have the sub user who did it and what has um, happened to that asset. So it gives you the entire history of the asset right there um, for you. You do have the ability to schedule maintenances if needed. So you can do this on a recurring or one-time uh, basis. The event tab gives you the overview of the check-in, check-out, who's responsible for it, where it's at, and when it's supposed to be due back. And then if you want, you can have depreciation. So this is um, included within the Gray Trunk system. If you want to track depreciation of assets, um, we do have that module here included in the Gray Trunk system. So a uh, very powerful tool uh, if you do need to track depreciation. 
One unique thing about Gray Trunk um, is the ability to import assets. So if you do have an asset list already, you are able to import assets in bulk rather than one by one, which is very useful as far as getting set up uh, quicker. So for, for the import asset to work, you actually have to add one asset into the system first and then the import asset does appear. Next, we're gonna jump into some of the reporting features that we have available on the web app. Um, you can set up automated reports to be sent out daily, weekly, monthly um, to specific users based on any factors that you want to see. So um, there's a lot of customization in the reporting that you have to choose from. Um, and it, you can have certain asset fields be included in the reports. So whatever information might be useful, for an example, if I want to see every asset that is checked out um, on Monday morning at 8 a.m., uh, I can have that sent to me um, automatically so I, it's when I show up to the office I know exactly what assets are checked out. Um, so just to give you a better overview of some of the different types of automated reports that we're able to, to do. You can also run maintenance reports to tell you sort of where, where you're at in any of your maintenance statuses um, and what is being performed and who is performing it. Uh, so you can see a bunch of that there and then we do have a scan report So anytime we perform an inventory scan we automatically uh, Log it into the system so you can see it at any given time who performed the scan how many assets were scanned And then even if we get a little bit further in here, you can see the found missing Misplaced and any new assets that were scanned so very useful information here easily exportable to a CSV or PDF file um, and then finally, we do have a depreciation report that we are able to generate for uh, maybe a specific location for specific uh, categories. Well, if you apply that there, um, we can see the depreciation um, that is ending you know, of the, the February 2022 in the book value at the end of that month. So that gives you a quick rundown of the web application. Um, but really the most powerful tool that we are probably going to show here is the scanning of the RFID tags. So hopefully this overview of the web application sort of sets the, the groundwork of the mobile application and how the RFID scanning is going to be performed. So we'll jump into the, the mobile apps right now. But first, um, you might want to download the Gray Trunk RFID app on the Apple um, App Store or the Google Play Store. Um, download it. If you've already created an account with Gray Trunk, it's the same login information uh, for the mobile apps as it is on the web. So um, take a second, download that, and we'll jump into the mobile applications and how the RFID scanning is performed. If you had a chance to download the Gray Trunk RFID mobile apps from either the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Here I have the Apple. Um, iOS app loaded on my screen so I'm going to show you a more in-depth view of the um, mobile application here on Gray Trunk RFID. So this is the dashboard as you can see very similar to what we saw on the web application. Um, it has pretty much everything that was on the dashboard of the web app. The main things I'll touch base on here is the ability to view assets on your mobile. Um, and then also the ability to scan the RFID tags um, using the barcode scanner or RFID scanner. It gives you everything that you need to know about your assets um, depending on the asset fields that you have. And it also gives you the ability to check in and check out um, straight from your mobile device. So there, I checked in the asset and as you can see, it is now available. If I wanted to check that asset out, I can certainly choose the employee that I would like to check this out to, um, the due date that it's supposed to be due back, so I'll schedule it for Friday, um, and then I am able to then check out the asset straight from your mobile device. The main feature of the mobile apps is to perform the scanning. So here on my devices, I already have a TSL reader um, connected via Bluetooth to my mobile device. If I want to perform an inventory scan, I'm gonna choose the scan option, and it shows that I do have the scan with my RFID reader, and it says that I have the, the technology solutions um, limited, 
which is the TSL 1128. If you want to, built into the gray trunk system is the ability to scan barcode. So if you're not ready for RFID yet, uh, barcode is a great option to, uh, to use for asset tracking. Um, so you are able to scan barcodes with the scanner, but today we're gonna focus mainly on the RFID. Um, here you would choose your inventory scan, so you're gonna choose the site um, where we did set up in the, uh, on the web app, and then also you would choose your location. So this is where you're saying, okay, I'm at this site and I'm at this location. I want to perform an inventory scan to see what I have there and what's supposed to be there, what I'm missing, what's misplaced. So um, I did a little teaser of this in part two. Uh, so if you hung with us through part two, uh, you might've saw a little bit of this, but here we're gonna perform a scan. So we're gonna hit the start scan button. I'm gonna set my reader power up to the highest level, but if you wanted to, you can turn this reader power down. Um, for instance, if you have a group of assets that are RFID tagged and you only want to scan just a small radius, so you only wanna capture a small amount and not capture everything in the room, this is where the um, reader power is um, very useful. But here, I wanna scan as many tags as I possibly can. Uh, so I can capture all the assets that I have available. On this screen, you'll see that total assets is 50, so at the site and location that I chose, I should have 50 assets here. All you have to do, now that the reader is connected, that we're in the scan in progress, is simply pull the, the trigger on the reader. And here you can see that I have scanned, um, right now, 92 RFID tags. It tells you the specific ID number that, that we captured. And then, so there's all the 92 assets there um, and their specific unique tag numbers. Once I hit complete scan, it's gonna tell you exactly what was found, what was missing, what was misplaced, and any new assets that are not added into the gray trunk system. That is an extremely powerful tool that you are able to use for any of your inventory audits. Think about scanning each asset individually to capture it or using RFID. You can see the power of RFID and how efficient that data collection is when you are performing any inventory audits. Uh, it's an extremely powerful tool and that's the, that is the importance of the RFID asset tracking system. I'm glad you joined us as we went over um, sort of how the RFID asset tracking software pulls together the RFID tags, the Bluetooth RFID handheld reader, and helps make your inventory audits for fixed asset management so much easier. I hope you enjoyed this three-part series. I'm glad you stuck with us to the end. Keep in touch with us on the Great Trunk RFID YouTube channel as we'll continuously be releasing videos regarding RFID asset tracking. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, we'll see you then.